Welcome, everybody. Oh, I love me some technical issues. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, Benny. How yeah, not you? everyone loves technical issues, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> not everyone. I'm just blessed in the airwaves. That's all I'm doing. And, and for those of you that are joining us on YouTube, uh, bear with me here. I'm, I literally have to hold my phone and <laughs> do the broadcast. <laughs> So if I'm wiggling around, Benny will, number one, he'll put me straight. But <laughs> Yeah, and I've got to tell you to stop wiggling. So, I mean, you know. And to stop wiggling, which I will. Yeah. And, and screaming and all that stuff. But I'm excited. I'm wiggling for our guests today. How are you? Good and super excited. Yes, we, uh, the guests and I actually have something very much in common. So very much. we can get to that when we get to the interview. I know. I'm so excited. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? Let's just jump in. Let's jump in. We got a juicy conversation to be had today. Before we do that, of course, you guys have heard me talk about this over and over again. It is an inside job. You got to check under the hood, my loves. So that inside job, you must have awareness on who you are and how you're showing up in the world. And today, awareness with a little nibble is about where are you getting your messages? The awareness is who is the I I am listening to? So when you're in a trauma state, when you're in a calm state, when you're in the pool or when you're driving, when you're in contrast, what is the I? Are you listening to the inner child that was abandoned back in the day? Or are you listening to the inner critic that, you know, that drunk monkey that's inside of you? Are you listening to the ego? So really pay attention to the answers and where your state of mind, your state of body is. Are you in homeostasis or are you in a critical state, a judgment state, um, a hurt inner child state? You know, really pay attention and have an awareness of that I who is speaking to you. Now, the contrast and the difference between the child, the inner critic and the ego, that true love, that true self is a calm, loving soft, gentle state of being. And that's where you want to get your answers from. So you, you guys have had questions and said, well, how can I tell the difference between like my intuition or my heart, my soul, my answers versus, you know, the, the critic, the inner critic, the child, the ego. Well, that's it right there. That's the contrast. If you are in the muck of it, the shiitake mushroom of it, don't make a choice. Get yourself calm. Take a time out. I can't tell you how many times I've taken a time out. Take a nap. Take a walk. Do what you got to do to preserve yourself and how you want to show up in your relating and your relationships. So that's it. That's your awareness. Check that's under it. the hood. It is about that's the four eyes and making uh -huh. sure that you are listening to your heart, true self versus the child, the critic, and the ego within those dynamics or that context of a relationship or relating. All right, today I'm super excited. Our guests, oh, we have got some good stuff here. Let me ask you something, guys. Do you desire, intend, want? I use the words. I, You know how much I love using my words. So do you desire, do you intend? And I say want because that's what media and everybody else does, but you guys know I don't like to use more so do you want more quality of life what does that look like to you quality of life intimacy on a whole new level similar to what i talked about in the intro to my show intimacy on a whole new level that could be energetic that could be sexuality that can be emotions all of that within yourself you have to be clear on who you are and how you're going to show up in the world you really do so today's guest i'm super excited we're going to get really clear on this conversation let me talk to you a little bit about this beautiful one Frida Bimbaum. See, I just did that again. I asked her. See, you guys, I do this all the time. And Ben is just, I know what he's doing. He's shaking his head going, Sue, here we go. She wants to be called Dr. <laughs> Dr. Frida. PhD is a research psychologist and psychotherapist in Saddle River, New Jersey, and an award-winning author of Life Begins at 60. And wait until you hear what she has to tell you. A new view of motherhood, marriage, and reinventing ourselves. And what price power, an age in depth study of the professional women in relationships. She's an expert on topics such as family dynamics, parenthood, relationships, addic addictions, anxiety, depression. Dr. Frida is a seasoned media personality and commentary who is adept 
at discriminating psychological underpinnings and the current issues. We're just going to bring her on because I cannot wait for you to hear what she has got to talk to us about. We're going to talk about the ick. We're going to talk about the love. And welcome. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Always a pleasure, love. Yes. Okay, so I can do the formal bio, but my audience, we want to get to know you, your energy, your why, and then we'll, we'll start going into the context of the conversation. Well, my energy is I have uh, five kids uh, ranging in a great uh, variety of ages. What can I tell you? Uh, I have uh, twins. I had uh, two boys, two beautiful boys when I was 60. Woohoo! Uh, and uh, Big fan. in America. <laughs> and I've also uh, had the privilege of uh, having wonderful experiences with my whole family. Um, I'm now writing a book, I'm writing a screenplay, hoping to start a new show, The Emotional Prenup, about why is it that we try to get a prenup on divorce, what about a prenup on helping the marriage stay together and what it is you need to do to keep that marriage? So this is hopefully a concept for a new show that my publicist and I are working on. And that's this is my latest, latest excitement and adventure. I always have to have something. This is it. And then a play about something I promised my father about the Holocaust that he went through. So these are the things that are in my life right now. Um, and my kids are growing older and I guess I am too, <laughs> but I don't feel it. I feel wonderful and I just feel better all the time. I think age is something that uh, invigorates you if you let it. I think 60 is wonderful and I think uh, any time is wonderful. It's really what you do. And if you're able to reach uh, the things that are most important to you. So that's what I'm doing, this emotional prenup about how to have a marriage where you step into it and you already know uh, what to expect, not that how often do we have to see the in-laws? Uh, and what did you say about monogamy? Uh, and uh, how do we spend our money? Money's one the number one issue about having a healthy relationship because the way people spend money, saving or spending uh, really becomes uh, uh, you know, bone of contention with what it is uh, that is your ultimate goal because money affects your lifestyle. It affects your financial decisions. And by the way, the book you spoke about, the first book, uh, it is about women who have high, higher status careers or are professionals have more say about money in the relationship uh, and more say about their social control. All across the board, it filters down into the relationship. So that's a study I did was basically about me. I wanted to know why I wasn't content enough to be happy having a wonderful husband and family, and I needed more. So I did research on that and showed the, the background of who your mother is has a lot to do with the direction you go. If your mother's happy being more domesticated or career oriented, my mother was both. So I was domesticated and then bang, I surprised my husband. I wanted to change all that and I went for my PhD and I had to study. And uh, although I did, I was accepted to Columbia uh, for my master's, Columbia University, and I dropped out for my kids. So women have still have to have that balance back and forth of what's important, uh, but you can do it all. Maybe you have to take turns doing it all. But I absolutely felt that this is what I needed and uh, it represented me uh, much more. And my practice has been an ongoing success uh, because I've also helped people to go ahead. Don't be afraid of rejection because often when you do change, the midst of that change can create problems in the relationship, uh, maybe even divorce, but it's better than ever uh, if you persevere. You have to keep pers persevering. You can't really say, oh, really? I'm not supposed to do that? Okay, I'll be nice. I'll do all the right things. Because guess what? Nobody really cares and you end up being miserable. And we do that for our parents. And once we become adults, we have to do that for ourselves. So that's a life lesson that we always learn. Um, 
I could go on forever talking about my life lessons uh, and what's important to me, but I finally cinched it. I'm finally doing the whole package of what's most important to me. It's interesting. I was thinking this morning, I drove my kids from high school. They were had some tests. And the day's beautiful here in New Jersey. It's in the 70s, just gorgeous, and the trees. And and I was really appreciating everything that we have. Uh, but you can only appreciate that when you fill yourself up inside with other things as well. Because we often tend to take the big things in our lives and they become, they lay dormant. And the little things, the errands, the things we have to do, the phone calls, the emails, whatever, they're the more urgent ones, and then we, that's the ones that we take care of. So please take care of the things that don't need uh, emergency situations or urgent situations, because those are the things that will keep coming back. And those are the things that really most define you of who you really are. I mean, everything I wanted to do, I wanted to do when I was much younger, when I was 18. I came from an Orthodox family, and God forbid, being in the media was like being a prostitute. My mother said to me, "Are really? you kidding? You want to be? You want to be in the media? Not my daughter, never." I said. And then my father said to me, "You wouldn't know what to say. Don't go on." So how I got this confidence, I have no idea. <laughs> they didn't have it in me. I wouldn't know what to say. Don't make a fool out of yourself, or whatever. So you know, as so I went the long route, I. Got my PhD first to write a book like I really didn't need that, but to, I did do extensive research. Um, and then, uh, slowly I used my academic, academia, whatever academia, uh, to be a psychologist. I said, Oh, wait, maybe I could do both. I could be a psychologist. I could be in the media. <laughs> and so I'm doing that. I'm giving information, hopefully, uh, that makes a difference, uh, to people that I, I used to watch, I used to go to see Betty Friedan and a lot of this uh, generational, uh, you know, that people don't know about uh, Gloria Steinem. And they said to me, they didn't even know me. And they said, you know what, you have a mission. You have to go out there and talk to uh, people in the media about uh, what's important in life. So I took that to heart and I said, really me? And I did, I've been doing that. So that's a little bit about uh, who I am. My happiness comes from making a difference, uh, seeing people that wouldn't be together and keeping them together, I believe, and working on what it is that you need um, and making sure that you know what it is and then go ahead and get what it is that you want. So that's the answer to your little question that you gave me. Thank you. And part, and I have to apologize to you, Dr. Friedman. And for those on YouTube, pardon me as I'm navigating, trying to move the phone and do all of that. <clears throat> and it's these beloved technical issues. And thank you. And, you know, thank you for me, me. Thank you, Dr. Frieda, for stepping in the rink in life, right? Oh, and really you have no choice. You have, otherwise you're miserable. You, you know, you, I send up, you end up arguing about something that has nothing to do with what you're feeling deep inside. And so you let it out on the person closest to you, which is your spouse, if you're with somebody or your partner or your kids or whoever it is, uh, because you feel safe, but really you're not working through, uh, what's lingering inside you. One thing we have to know also is, we can't continue to please, as I said before. Uh, our perception of what happened is no longer there. We connect that, it's called counter-transference, to other things in our lives that really don't apply anymore. So be careful, reality, perception. Weigh the two uh, back and forth, and your spouse or your partner has nothing to do with what happened to you. Uh, this per person is there because of who you present yourself to be. They can't make up for what did happen. And so that's a little bit of, uh, you know, when we're talking about our topic today, uh, which has gone viral, which is gaslighting. Are we talking about that today? Yeah, we can talk about okay, I wasn't sure. I was, Yeah, gaslighting is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's gaslighting, there's gaslighting, moonlighting, purple lighting. I guess so, but, the word I never heard of before, but they said gaslighting. Yeah, gaslighting. Uh, but there's, Let's back up for a minute, if yeah. we could, Dr. Frida, because I want to talk about 
triggers and narratives. So we have a life, we all have our individual lives yes. that we live and our experiences that we live. And, and quite honestly, my ex, what he would do is say, you are triggering me. And I'm like, hey, 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 wait a minute. And there would be, I'm like, I have no idea what the trigger is inside of you. And I want to unpack that for audiences because I know I've heard it from other people that say, hey, you're triggering me. And I want to make sure that we unpack and have our audience understand it's not about the other person. You have to take your power back Absolutely. and take accountability and say, oh, something just got me there. What was that? Was it the inner child? Was it the ego? What is, was it the critic similar to my awareness practice at the top of the hour? Go ahead, yes. Dr. Rita. Yes, you know, it's very similar to what we're talking about today. And it's gone viral, the ick factor. Um, the ick what factor. does that mean? And uh, you're disgusted by the other person. Uh, and uh, that disgust is coming from where? But there are some things that are insignificant and some things that are actually significant. So if you have a date, let's say, and there's tooth stuck and a uh, food stuck in a person's teeth or something, <laughs> you know, give a guy, give that person a chance. I mean, say something about it. Please, please, please do. Please, <laughs> please, you know, this could happen to you too. Uh, oh, so, you know. They're so judgmental. And what about the way they treat the waiter, or the waitress? You know, they say, ah, okay, now I know he's, that person's not for me. It's like we're looking for reasons why this is not going to work. I remember when I was like 18 years old, very immature for my age, believe me, and uh, very immature for any age. Uh, and uh, my date was carrying the umbrella in a way that was, seemed effeminine to me like this I, duh i wouldn't go out with him again the nicest guy the nicest family had everything going drove a fantastic car even the garage person said those that's your parents car i was so clueless so I had everything going I, and i and i really did not have the ability to rationalize that there's nobody perfect i'm not perfect for sure so if they came late or they came to the wrong house, you know, finished, 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 finished. Today, we have to look at what's really important. What is the reason why we can't be with that person? And it could be politics. There are people that really do not date or get together because one believes in Trump, who they feel has changed the country, and a, a Biden who has destroyed the country. And other people feel that Trump is off the wall and press, and Biden is uh, civil and down to earth. And we have this divide about, or the environment, if somebody's throwing trash on the street. Those things, you know, could be important to the relationship if that is something that really does affect you. So we have to sort of pick and choose what it is. But when we look at somebody who's been in a relationship are not in a relationship for 20 years and it's always someone else's fault and we have to realize that that person may need some kind of intervention uh, afraid of intimacy afraid of feelings or rejection or criticism maybe their parents criticize them so they're saying i'm going to get to you first before you get to me so those are some of the uh, issues really that need to be redefined of how we are looking at other people and how we can go ahead and make things work. I love that, Dr. Free. And I, and I, there is an absolute conversation. It's a non-negotiable for me that I, uh, for me, for the, you know, let me back up and have this conversation. What I'm trying to say is I, for me, have got to be really clear on who I am and what my morals, my values, my personal code of conduct, what that looks like to me in, in order for me to have a quality relationship moving forward, right? So to the audience, I wanna reiterate and make sure that they understand you're not gonna get from that other person what you're lacking inside. You've gotta do the work with inside. You have to first. be healthy to meet the right person. You have to be in a good place. It's not a coincidence that people say to me, how come what I'm happy is and I'm smiling and I feel so good. That's when I have somebody in my life. What about when I need somebody and I'm feeling deprived? Uh, isn't that the time? 
that I really would appreciate somebody in my life? No, that's when you push that person away or people away. People don't wanna be with victims. People don't wanna fix you. They really want to see that there's equality and there's a balance of back and forth. Because a relationship is, what can you do for me? What can I get from you? Back and forth. It's not about when you meet somebody, oh, I'm gonna take care of you the rest of my life. That's a fantasy. It never happens. It's about, oh, what does this person have that's going to give me something? And when you get that something, then you want to give back. It starts the other way around. People don't necessarily want to admit that, but that's really how it starts. What is it? I mean, I met my husband. Um, I went to a singles weekend. I don't know if you're familiar with this. It was, it's no longer open. Grossinger's. And have you heard this? No. Where are, I, I don't even know where you are, but anyway, so, uh, grossing. So we were together and I was intimidated about going into the main dining room. I was like 19 years old or 20. My mother pushed me out of the house quickly. You know, uh, when am I going to get married? That kind of deal. So I was standing outside of this hallway to go in uncomfortable because my roommate wouldn't go in with me or something happened, whatever. And this young guy comes up to me and says, would you like to have lunch with me? And I said, boy, how sophisticated, you know, it's like round robin, you sit with other people. Wow, I was really impressed by him. So on the way back, he took his scarf off and put it around me. And that's it, it was a cinch deal. Because kindness was very important to me. A person very who was fun. kind was somebody that ultimately is the soul of that person was who you really live with. And from that time on, we sat on the bus together, we were engaged three months later and three months after that we were married and uh we've been married for a long time <laughs> ever since but it is about a feeling it's about connecting uh it's about respecting the other person and you know if you see something that you feel is wrong uh what's wrong with talking about it what's wrong with bringing well there's it so much the fear person? and shame <clears throat> fear shame and doubt from the other person you've yeah. got to have the equilibrium yeah. And I think the emotional intelligence to to be able to hold that space for the other person. So, um, Dr. Frieda, we've got to take a quick commercial break. So for the audience in Radio World, we'll be back in about three minutes. For those of joining us on YouTube, bear with us here. I may try and get some technical issues done. Dr. Frieda, we'll continue our conversation, you. please, on YouTube you. while I'm also going to be noodling and trying to get my laptop going so we have a better communication here. Benny, take it away, love. All right, all clear, you too. You'll just have to give me a quick second. I know I don't know the difference. It's a big screen. You're talking to me. You're looking, no one would know, no one would even know. Oh, that really? I'm, I see myself in this little no. corner screen. No, right but you're, I see you in a, my big screen on my computer, full view of you. Not in oh, a little good. screen. Okay. Yeah, that's why I wanted to turn your phone, Cam, uh, your uh, Sue, so you could be oh, yeah. the same as her. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to look over there when I'm talking? If you want, it's okay. You? Uh, at the camera, yeah. but it doesn't really. Yeah, that's the camera. Yeah, yeah. there I can see, yeah. look at you. <laughs> the camera. Yeah. Camera. Okay. There we go. I, like <laughs> All right. I love it. So YouTube world, bear with us here yeah. for just a minute. It's all good. I love this conversation, Dr. Freed. I think let's come back uh, to live radio also and really engage and let's have a conversation around real life practical tools that we can offer the audience. We're giving them a lot of wisdom and backstory, and I want to make sure that they can walk away with real nuggets that they can take into their life and make changes, right? I mean, that's resilience, that's wisdom, that's, that's what we're looking for. I'm sorry, Benny, do you have that code left? Oh, I didn't know you still needed it, sorry. That, one sec. Yeah, I'll try it and get 
Uh, let's see. The ID is 112-412-482. Meeting passcode? Yeah. 022-499. Now everyone can join. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Something's happening. Yep. It says admitting. Oh, fantastic. Yay. Okay. There we go. I'm going to end with my phone. Okay. Okay. You guys can see me on here, right? Going computer. Oh, you can see my armpit. You got to turn off your, let's see here, which one is she on? Okay, so there, we got you. Can you hang up your phone? There we go. How's that? Good. We got you on your computer, I think. There we are. Nice. Now I've got Benny. I can chat yeah. with Benny. Thanks to all of our viewers for paying attention and uh, watching what we're going through, right? <laughs> there we go. Can you hear me? So much better. Can you hear me? Yes. I can. Oh. Yeah. Okay. She can't hear us, though, I don't think. Can you hear us? Yes, I okay, can good. hear you. Okay. <laughs> yep. Well, cool. Let us know when you're ready to come back. I am ready. Share screen, video, make all this stuff happen. Okay. All right. Stand Thank you. by. And you're live. Yay. Welcome back, everybody. And for those on YouTube world, thank you so much for bearing with me. And Dr. Frida, thank you so much for your patience. My pleasure. And thank you so me. much. Thank you, love. Radio World, we are back. Sue here with Clarity with Sue. We are talking to Dr. Frida. We have been talking a lot uh, about, uh, well, middle age, but also in general, we're talking about getting really clear on who you are and how you're showing up in the world, what that looks like, your personal code of conduct, um, making sure, like Dr. Frida was talking about at the top of the hour, making sure that you really understand who you are before you're entering into any kind of relationship or relating, you're, it's not about going to the other person to have them fix you. That's not what it's about. If you have triggers, if you have things going on in your life, you need to make sure that you fix those within yourself first and provide an equilibrium, a safety between the two of you, right? Now, granted, like you were saying, Dr. Frida, it's not gonna be perfect. Nothing is perfect, but if you get, and I love this, if you give it perfect effort, if you truly come, uh, um, my language with the CCs in life, compassionate curiosity, not only for yourself, but the other person. And you get really curious and stay, you know, it takes that sting out of the situation, right? Absolutely. You know, people ask me, you know, how can I be happy? What is happiness? We hear this all the time. And I know for a fact, there's no such thing as happiness. It's contentment. Are you content? Oh. Yeah, you know, we search happiness. People come to my practice. I want to be happy. And they're never in a place of contentment. Uh, they want to make sure they have everything. And it's a false premise. You can't have everything. What about the word good enough? What about being mm. satisfied with where you are? If you think about what you've done up to this point, you'll see you have done more than you realize. We always want to add on more. I'm not saying it's wrong to add on more. Life has to be a process. You have to keep evolving. That's part of it. I tell people in relationships every five years, reassess where you're going. Uh, like the emotional contract, uh, are you on target with what it is that you want? When we talk about contentment. We talk about what is good enough. You need to know what your values are. It's not that you're not going to struggle. It's not that it's going to come to you and you're going to have what you want. You have to be willing to work for it. If you're willing to put yourself out, if a relationship is important enough, you'll really work on it. 
If that's it. Enough, that's it right there. If yeah. it's important enough to you. Yeah. You've got to determine that if you're going yes. to invest emotional, financial, sexual, Absolutely. all the energies. 50% of our population that is married will end up in divorce. 50% of people who were married are divorced. I mean, how ridiculous is that? What does that mean uh, to be devoted to a partner? You know, with the marriage vows, you know, to uh, what are they? I don't even know. Sickness and death and uh, through all that stuff. Well, we leave much earlier than that. <laughs> we don't even wait for that to happen. I don't well, want to Well, you know what? That's, well, yeah, no, Dr. Preeta, that's really important uh, because yeah. there's a lot of relationships that are happening right now where the other party just doesn't have the capacity to do the work is they're just so shut down. Right. And I, and I'm speaking from experience because mine was yeah. like that too. I'm the fighter and the communicator. I can tell that for sure. That I can <laughs> tell, believe me, you have, I could leave, I could not talk and you could talk during this whole time we have. I know. I well, I've got to be thing. engaging I, and advocating for the audience too. Yeah, Bear but with I, me. I'm trying to be a guest that has some information here, but I can <laughs> see that about you. You should be a guest, but uh, for sure. But where was I going? I was going with the fact that yes, we we have to know that uh, to take something seriously, that there are going to be problems. Uh, that we have to know what's important enough uh, in our lives. You know, in the past, it used to be divorce was a disease. God forbid people didn't even talk about it. Today, it's just a click of a button and you zoom on to the next potential candidate on these sites the social media sites yes. uh, and that's very scary because one can be worse than the other let's stay with where we are let's see what we can work through and you know happiness in a relationship is about that contentment the more you get to know a person guess what the more closer you get to that person the more you understand that person we live in such a superficial world everything is about glamour uh, your first feelings about that person. You know, we, uh, it takes a few seconds to determine what we think of that other person. We don't even give that person a chance to verbalize anything. I mean, what's in their mind? Who, who is, what is in their soul? Who are they really? We don't know about that. Uh, we know about what that partner has. Oh, you like to have fun. You like to dance. You like sports. You like to vacation. That's what they have in these social media sites. And then you get together and you're very disappointed because that depth of that person is nothing you know about. And how long can you keep up a superficial a relationship? So it's pretty scary out there uh, to not to see somebody first, uh, but to just have these Zoom calls and just say, nah, I won't go there. Right. I'm not like, it's, you know, it's, it's just very scary not to have that type of opportunity. I have a, I had a patient who, um, very uh, narcissistic and, uh, went to the gym all the time, met all these females at the gym, picked them all up, did all this stuff with them, went, went out with them. Uh, and he found somebody on Zoom on a link, a dating link. Uh, and he went out with her. Well, here comes this woman in and she's shorter, <laughs> older, and does not look like the person he saw. Well, the superficial narcissistic patient that I had got up and said, excuse me, I have to use the men's room. He never came back. He told me the story. I said, what? I mean, what has therapy not done for you here? <laughs> What am I doing wrong? <laughs> you, would, you would do something like that to begin with. I'm telling you, this is these are the things that are so unnerving. Uh, we don't know about the family. What is the family like? What are genuine connection, like? right? No con are they divorced? Are they are they uh, people who uh, support who you are? Do you get along with them? Do they like you? Uh, what are your life plans together as two people? Uh, what does he believe in? Those things, those serious things, you know, we want to have fun. But how much can you have fun? You know, you go up, you have to come down sometimes. 
and you have to come down to reality. And so if you go up too high too quickly, uh, there's nowhere else to go. So to have that kind of grounding in the beginning, then you can have fun. So I, I really feel uh, that know the person first, then go out and have a good time. We do the other. We have a good time. By the time we know that person, it's already over because there's no depth and we're disappointed because they said something a certain way because we don't really understand compassion, empathy. Those qualities are not ingrained in us. And so uh, this emotional connection is something that we don't even get to that point yet. We have to give the opportunity to know that next person could be worse. We have somebody here who wants to work with us. And the core values that you have, if you could hold on to those core values, then if that person doesn't have it, then that's a good reason to move on. So you have to know what's important and what is not important. And what is important is that there are certain things that if you go, are going to keep arguing about um, certain opportunities, if he wants you to work and you don't want to work, or she wants you not to work and she wants to work, whatever that is, those are things that are lifestyle events that really can break a marriage. So you have to say, look, let's look at the questions and answers we have to keep this marriage intact. And then if you have that sense of working it through, I will respect you, then you can go ahead and say, all right, now we can go on a cruise. <laughs> now now we can uh, have some fun. Uh, and we have something much more solid in a relationship this way. I love this. So Dr. Frida, earlier you were talking about your new baby that's coming up, the emotional prenup. I think that that is, and when you, when I, when I hear prenup, it, it can make, it kind of makes me cringe. So I want to, I want to take out that narrative, not only in my body and the audience, because I advocate for the audience as well. Yes. <clears throat> it's not about having a negative connotation. It's about making, and as sterile as this sounds, it's about making an appropriate business decision, emotional decision. You have all of these incredible choices, business, all of this stuff that you're choosing in life and making big decisions and really processing, why shouldn't you be doing that with your relationship? Right. And, yeah. and getting really clear on what that looks like within that relationship and really having an emotional connection with that person and diving deep again, if that is the person that you see potential with. Absolutely right. You know, we, we, we get into a relationship. If you don't have sex after the first three dates or dates, you know, there's something wrong with you. And then there's that romantic part. That's not reality at all. Oh, the uh, hormones and, flooding in yes, all the, yeah. Dining and dining and going to the best places and concerts. And how long <laughs> is that going to last? <laughs> you know, till the guy's money runs out or the yeah. whoever's paying for it. Uh, and then, the marriage and that scares us because we've been having too much fun. So what does the marriage imply? Responsibilities, errands, uh, uh, working, you know, going back to life. So that's the place uh, where we pause. And so when they say happily ever after, there's a question mark because happily ever after what? After the romantic part? After <coughs> the sexual, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, events that you have together? So we have to look and see that uh, as we keep moving on, that we're moving into a place of safety and a place where we have information. But it's too easy today to meet other people online. And it used to be that there was a community. And in the community, there were only so many people you could meet. So what? Oh my gosh! Five, do you remember the phone cord that you would right? hang and, and go around yeah. the corner because you didn't want mom and dad hearing? You know. That's it. That's about <laughs> it. You know. So you had to pick one out of five. Who's the best one out of the five? <laughs> All right. This guy was not so great, but I guess I'll whatever, and right, I'll settle with him. No settling. No settling. No settling. But it, it, we used to be before we knew it, we'd be pregnant and we'd be involved with the community and we wouldn't know what hit us. We'd be clueless and forget about uh, anything else. But was it worse? Well, at least we got married. At least we tried to stay in the marriage. And today it's looked at differently. 
uh, today we have children before we get married. Today, we don't even know if we want to get married. Uh, yeah. We don't know what it is that we're doing that we are having careers first. It used to be out of high school, you would get married now. Uh, and it's great. Women are having uh, careers and they're getting educated. They're getting married later. And then there's this in vitro that helps women to be fertile later on as well. So it's not that age gap uh, when between men and women and the equality about having children because women can have children later also. So the, we're both more on the same page, back and forth. And the way uh, we dress and the way we feel. I remember my mother used to wear these black old lady shoes. And I'd say to her, Ma, if you didn't wear those shoes, no one would know you're old. Uh, that's how mature I was. <laughs> Whatever. She looked at me like, you know, Frida, get a grip here. Yeah. Grow up. All right. But I didn't know. <laughs> to me, all these things made sense to me. Yes, it does. Have changed. So I wear, I don't wear old lady shoes. I'll show I don't wear old lady sneakers shoes either. You got sexy them. shoes on. Yes. Yeah. The pandemic sneakers are the thing to wear. Yes. But, okay. Um, so let's, let's swing back around, Dr. Frida, about the conversation. Again, the over the umbrella that we're speaking to here is really understanding who you are coming together yes. in a relationship regardless of the dynamic if you want to get married don't want to get married if you want to have monogamy or if you want to have a non-monogamous poly whatever that relationship is for you that's yes. quality for you you the human has you have to get clear on who you are and be healthy within that dynamic so you then can come together and have an yes. equality relating. So what is healthy? We have to look at what is healthy. Healthy is when you've developed a sense of yourself. Who are you? What is it you like? What are your hobbies? What is it that you want to do in your lifetime? Uh, what are the kind of people that you like to be with? Uh, are you very focused on your future plans? What makes you a person that's contented in life? When you have that whole package together, if you know yourself, if you know where you're going, then guess what? You can meet a like-minded person. But if you don't know that, you'll never be in the right place. So you're right. It starts with who you are. And you're right also. It's not even about having to meet someone. It's about the contentment with who you celebrate your life with, that you are making the right decisions for yourself. What is it that you are getting full with? And what is your path in your own life? Because whether you meet someone or not, that's not as important. It really isn't. Because you have to be in a good place alone first, or be in a good place with someone or not with someone. Right. So going forward about what it is that you need, it doesn't mean you have to stick to it. There's trial and error. There's nothing wrong with taking a chance and making choices and changing at the same time. So allow yourself to do that, to do that. But you need to have that kind of strength, the kind of trust in yourself and the kind of fortitude to tell people to get out of the way. I'm coming through. I'm doing what I want to get out of my way. I'm coming through and I'm going to do what I I'm going to do, do what I'm going to do. I love you, but I'm going this way. I'm the yeah. whole picture. Well, let's I talk need. about. You, we talk about reclaiming, redesigning, rediscovering, yeah. right? And I think that, and you, you talked about this at the top of the hour, that evolution. So you can come with the basis of who you are, really strong in that. Yes. And also the permission, the accountability, the responsibility, and the power within yourself to have an evolution within the relationship. Yeah. And I think that's really important because I know I got really stagnant in my relationship. And I, and trust me, I, I was working really hard to make sure we were all okay and then i lost myself right and there's a lot of conversation with people even now you know i've lost myself so reinventing rediscovering reclaiming who you truly are is the foundation before you go into another relationship and it being okay dr frida to say you're okay it's okay no shame no guilt okay it's a hundred percent okay and be on that path put yourself on the path if anybody yeah. wants to push you off, push them off and yeah. you put yourself back on again. Right there, because sister. I get out of my way. You know, I'm just saying this is the only way. If you want to meet somebody, 
if they join you on the path or they support your path or help you with your path, then you're with the right person. Otherwise, no relationship is worth you losing the sense of who you are. Uh, no relationship is worth you having trying to get that other person to agree with you. If you're working too hard to do that, then you're better off without that person. You're better off because you are your best partner in life. You are the one that's going to be there for yourself. If you can continue that, whether a person comes into your life or not, you're in the best place possible. You're very fortunate because it's not easy to know what it is you want. People come to see me and say, what do you want? They don't know. So if you first know that's, that's rampant, hardest, right? That's rampant. That's the hardest place to be in. What do you want? And then when you have the stamina, the comfort level, and when you know and you trust yourself and you move on that, you're in the best place possible because that takes confidence. I don't care what they teach you in school. You memorize, you forget the whole thing. But <laughs> I never, I have a PhD, but forget it. I, I just, whatever. I never believed in any of that stuff. I did it because I thought I was supposed to. Yeah. But whatever. I'm just saying, but confidence is really what gets you in the world. Not the person who has the best voice or who's best in math or who's yeah. whatever it is. The person who's able to find that path because not only are you doing it for yourself, you're a wonderful role model for other people because that's what liberation is about. That's what it is liberating yourself to be able to say, you know what, I did this and this and someone else was like, hey, I want to do that. Why couldn't I do that? How come I'm stuck? How come I have all, looks like I have all this, the cars, the house, the kids, the husband, whatever. But where am I in this picture? What happened to me? And I remember I used to have a lot of women, mid thirties is when it hits them. Mid thirties is when they, the kids are already getting older, not today, but you know, they're in school and they have from nine to three available to themselves. What are they doing with their time? They're shopping for food. All right. They're going exercising. That's good. But what are they really doing? Did I do all this to be there for somebody else? What has happened to me? What is going to happen to me? Is this it? Is this the end of the rope? They get depressed, by the way, or even clinically depressed when they feel. We have, we actually have a question from one of the listeners on YouTube, and they're wondering how much do you think the social media contributes to the ultimate breakdown of a marriage or a long term relationship? Horribly, horribly. Most of the breakdowns are from being a visual community. It's about looking at that person, saying all the right things finding out it's not a hundred percent and it's just too easy to access. It's just too easy to feel that you have so much power that you could get anybody you want. And then we break down as a community. It's a breakdown. We don't have enough physical connection with the other human being to see if we did that, that nobody's really perfect. You know, what did they do with, they, they fix their faces on screen and whatever. Oh, and this, the, um, filters. Yeah. yeah filters. No, no filters. Like <laughs> yeah. Whatever I want you to see me for who I am. We all of it. it. And so yeah. We don't see each other. And no. we don't know that other people have problems and, you know, Facebook, whatever, everyone's partying and jumping up and down and we get depressed. What about our parties? We don't yeah. have any. So <laughs> a party in the bands or something. I'm just here doing this in my office. That's about it. So, oh, totally. so you know, we have to realize that we're not part of this superficial mm. uh, situation. So you get together. So the guy saw somebody shorter. The poor thing made herself ten years younger because she was in, under stress to do so. How about saying, "I'm older and I want a younger person. I don't have much money." <laughs> but I, it's not important to me. You yeah. know, somebody could relate to you and say, hey, wait a minute. This person is genuine. This person is real. Because we get together, we're disappointed anyway. So Hands we, down. I totally agree yeah, with what you're saying, Dr. Freak. Because the dating, I'm in, I'm in the muck of all the dating as well. And I'm like, oh, oh, it's just. I'm sorry I, for you. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm attracting the one. He will come sooner or later. It will happen. And I'm totally okay with being by myself. Your own aura that he will be attracted to you. 
he's going to be pulled into your aura. That's yeah. what it is. It, it, that's, it's as simple as that. But when you're in the same place, uh, when you have the opportunity to see each other, talk about your vulnerability, talk about your problems, talk about what it is you want to fix, talk about how you want to change your life and make things differently. Isn't that fun as a couple of two people together working together towards something? And again, I going back to what you said. Perfect. Who wants it's boring, really? Yeah, it's no. Not, there's no challenge. Right. No. And, you know, going back to what you were saying, um, Dr. Frieda, at the top of the air about if this is your potential, if there is true potential that you feel there's a potentiality in this relationship and relating, then start asking those deeper questions, right? Yes, you're right. You start asking those deeper questions and don't be afraid that you'll be rejected because at least you're taking care of it quick sooner than later. It's going to come up eventually. And not only that, what we're talking about and what you're telling me, the message you're giving me today was a very important message would be true to yourself first. You have to walk away liking yourself. Yes. You know, that's the message you're giving me. So if you sell yourself to somebody else, you're robbing yourself oh. of who you are. What are you, what are you getting out of that? We, we, the best moments in our lives, the ones we have that we can really cherish is when we have our own space. With me in the morning, I get up, everyone's sleeping, six o'clock in the morning. I don't know what I'm doing, but no one's going to bother me. Yes, <laughs> I could be doing nothing. I could be just blah, blanking out or watching some of these stupid videos that they have here. Yes. Whatever, break dancing. I don't know what they're doing. Whatever, but it's whatever. your time. It's your time. It's your space. That's the time to treasure the most. Yourself, your time, you connecting to your own needs and finding out about yourself spiritually, what you need to do, uh, what, where you need to go as far as your joyfulness, what that is supposed to mean, that kind of connection, nobody can give you. I don't care how long you look for the right person. That person won't be able to give it to you. But if you have that, that person will be drawn to you because that person is going to want the same thing. Yes. That's the best situation to be able and to have that, no matter what it is that you're doing. And wouldn't you agree? We've just got, we've got one more minute. I want to make sure that every, I had another question, but we're going to run out of time. Um, first of all, thank you so much for stepping in the rank and being a badass queen that you are. You are the badass. I can see that in your face. Because when I talk about doing your own thing, you're, I can, I can see, I can watch you. You're really out there doing it. And so good for you. I mean, that's why you have this. Uh, I, I'm scared to death, but I'm doing it anyways. You know, well, who isn't scared? You know, if we're right? scared, we wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. We say, exactly. Oh my God, what am I doing today? Oh my God, no, I, I'm not doing that. And yeah, you gonna, are. You're going to do it, baby. You're going to do it, and you'll and be okay. I love and you. you. And even better. And that's who I'm looking at right now. And that's the life that you really need to live and to lead to be able to keep changing evolving making a difference to other person that's what feeds you amazingly more yes, than anything absolutely. else absolutely how yeah. do people get a hold of you love so i have a podcast the dr frida show d-o-c-t-o-r f-r-i-e-d-a show then my website is d-r-f-r-i-e-d-a.com that's enough information about me <laughs> we'll get that information to you as well yeah. all right loves Thank you again. Yeah. Again, that thank you is wrapped up in a big, huge bubble of just deep gratitude, appreciation, yes, and you're wonderful. You give me that a positivity, that feeling. You know, you can only be as good as the person who's interviewing you. Absolutely, oh. I can. I can guarantee you. If I see some stiff interviewing, you, especially oh. if I'm on TV, you have four minutes to go. The other oh. time I had seven minutes. Just guess what? We only have five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, oh, okay. And I hear I, I memorized everything. And I said, how am I going to get that out? I don't know. Oh, I know. No, I, that's why I have this whole hour, you know, 50. So I, want, I want substance. So does my yes. audience, right? I don't yeah. want to do sound bites, for God's no, sake. You no. Get the person, you get who yes. that person is behind the story. And, and what All about what we've been talking yeah. about the umbrella of connection. Podcast, 
that's my favorite thing to do more yeah. than any of the other stuff that I do. Wonderful. But love you. You're great. Oh, thank you. Well, hang on just a minute. Stay oh. with us, sweetheart. Benny's okay. going to end the radio show and then we'll, we'll, we'll have a little chat. So audience, thank you so much for joining us. I will see you next week. And until then, each of you are a gift. Get out there and share yourself with the world.